Good afternoon, everyone. I think we can do a little better than that at the end of the semester. Good afternoon, everyone. That's more like a College of Ag Sciences commencement exercise. Hey, it's a beautiful and gorgeous day for commencement, isn't it? Blue skies around us, uh, beautiful landscape around us, and of course, building great relationships again, having not had a commencement ceremony in two years. It's fantastic for us to be together today, isn't it? I'm James Pritchett, I'm the Dean of the College of Agricultural Sciences. It's my pleasure to welcome you today to this commencement exercise. You notice I'm not wearing my mask right now. What we do is, is within these ceremonies, is allow our speakers who will speak in public to, to take off their masks so that they can be heard. And so that, well, to be honest, so that we can breathe a little bit as we're speaking. But I would ask you to keep your mask on because rams take care of rams. And our students, our students and our faculty have done a fantastic job of taking care of each other very resiliently through this pandemic. So to them, I say congratulations and appreciate you doing much, much of the same thing. You know, this is a great opportunity for us to be able to celebrate and to convene. And when you think about the purpose of convening, you remind yourself that we come together because it's on those special occasions, those special occasions that we have a chance to be able to affirm the things that are important to us, whether that be a transition at a point in time, to affirm the, the relationships that we have and how we care for each other, to show respect for one another, and to show really how important this investment has been for us. So at a land-grant university, I think that's particularly poignant, don't you, within a College of Agricultural Sciences, that we affirm our commitment to being able to feed the world and to take care of our natural resources and to be able to grow the next generation of agriculturalists. It's also important for us as a land-grant university to acknowledge that our commitment is something that is a social contract that will continue into the future and that it also is coupled with, coupled with, what was really dire consequences for those who, whose lands were taken as part of, part of that creation of the Colorado State University. So it's our opportunity at this point of convening to affirm both what we want in the future and to acknowledge what took place in the past. And so with that, I would like to share with you Colorado State University's land acknowledgement. Colorado State University acknowledges with respect that the land we are on today is the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Arapaho, the Cheyenne, and the Ute nations and peoples. This was also a site of trade, gathering and healing for numerous other native tribes. We recognize the indigenous peoples are as original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. Colorado State University is founded as a land-grant institution, and we accept that our mission must encompass access to education and inclusion, and significantly, that our founding came at a dire cost to Native nations and peoples whose land this university was built upon. This acknowledgement is the education and inclusion we must practice in recognizing our institutional history, our responsibility, and our commitment. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise for a moment for the presentation of the colors by the Colorado State University Air Force Pershing Rifles Wing Walker Honor Guard with Emmanuel Benia singing God Bless America in our national anthem.
God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs burst in and air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the and the home of the brave. Thank you, Emmanuel. You may be seated. That puts it in a little bit of context, doesn't it? A great way to start our convening, to really set the tone for what is our nation and the commitment that we have to its principles and the principles of, of this university. I want to take a few moments to introduce to you the platform group uh, today. They also represent vital parts of what takes place at the university or them, are themselves leaders within the university structure. What I'd ask platform committee, what I'd ask to do is, is as I say your name, would you please rise and remain standing until we've had a chance for everybody to be recognized? I would also encourage you, while we don't want to applaud for everyone all the time, a single clap, a single clap after I announce a name, would be appropriate. So with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Marshall Frazier, Professor, Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics and College Marshall. <laughs> Dr. Jan Leach, Associate Dean of Research and a University Distinguished Professor. <laughs> Dr. Gene Kelly, Associate Dean of Extension and Deputy Director of the Ag Experiment Station. <laughs> Dr. Jessica Davis, Head, Department of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture. Dr. Keith Belk, Head, Department of Animal Sciences. Dr. Haley Chenard, Head, Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics. Dr. Matt Wallenstein, Head, Department of Soil and Crop Sciences. Dr. Amy Charkowski, Head, Department of Agricultural Biology. Ms. Addie Elliott, our Assistant Dean of Academic Advising and Student Success. Dr. Mary Stromberger, Dean and Vice Provost for Graduate Affairs. President Joyce McConnell, President of Colorado State University. Dr. Kemba Marshall, commencement speaker and director of veterinary service at Lando Lakes Purina Animal Nutrition Center. And Mr. Matt Camper, assistant dean of teaching practice and academic programs. 
Please let me recognize our announcer as well, Dr. Sue Ellen Melzer, and our interpreters for the hearing impaired, Mary Jane Tom and Renee Wilson. Please join me in welcoming these individuals. You may be seated. I want to speak to the parents and the families for just a moment. I could see on your faces as we were in the reception together and as you took pictures and spoke to your, to your graduates, the pride that you feel right now. The pride of their accomplishments, the pride of seeing them make it to this day, pride that they're affirming the values that you have and that they've carried with them. We're proud alongside you. They represent because of your mentorship, your tutelage, your parenting, they represent the very best that Colorado has, has to offer. So thank you. Thank you for everything you've done to get them to this point. I want to say a little something to the graduates right now, too. I can see emotion on your face, even, even behind your mask. I can see some of those emotions that, that you have. There's emotion, well, I think that's anticipation that I see right now. You're anticipating what's, what's going to come next, too, right? And, and just behind you, there's a little bit of nervousness, too, about, about what might come next as well. What does this world have to offer us? But I think, too, that among you right now, I see a lot of gratitude. Gratitude for your families, we just mentioned, and also gratitude for the folks that at CSU mentored you and, and challenged you. So let's take a moment. Could I please have the faculty of the College of Agricultural Sciences please rise for a moment? I'd also like to have the professional staff, the advisors, the folks who work in stu student success. Could you please rise, too, for a moment? Graduates, think about your journey right now. Think about how the faculty, they're really the heartbeat of this campus. They're the ones who design the curriculum, design the classes. They're the ones who have challenged you over time to help you get to where you were. Some of them were friends, some were mentors, some were true guides for what you did. And think about your ASCs, your academic success coordinators, and the folks that worked with you in student success. That at times, you know, maybe it wasn't about the best class that you're gonna take, or maybe that professor you wanted to avoid. I think Pritchett was one of those. But it was also about, hey, how do I find my life's plan? And how do I sort through these kinds of challenges that I may face? And what, what's the future hold for me? And they guided you in that, in that direction. So would you take for just a moment to show with your applause, your gratitude, to the faculty and to the professional staff that we have in the College of Ag Sciences. Thank you, you may be seated. I want to take, uh, I'm going to go off script a little bit. Wherever Kirsten Slaughter Rice, who coordinates this graduation commencement ceremony is, she's, she's cringing a little bit because she didn't realize I was going to do this. I want to recognize one other individual at this time. Could I please have Dr. Marshall Frazier stand up? You know, Dr. Frazier, about 30 years ago, I was a student in your class. And for the folks that are here, many of you have been touched by Dr. Frazier through his, his classes and his pedagogy where he always seemed to set a standard, something to reach for and to strive for. Many of you students have Platte Valley Paul on the tip of your tongue right now when you think about that. <laughs> Marshall was one of, those, one of those faculty members who's changed lives through his time here at CSU. And there isn't a time when I don't go out in the state somewhere and some student will pull me aside and say, hey, how's, how's Dr. Frazier doing? I remember that time. And for those of you who didn't have him in class, if you've ever, well gosh, if you've ever added a major in the College of Ag Sciences and had a second major, were able to graduate on time because of that, Dr. Frazier touched your life because he was an architect in that. And if you've ever had a chance to do a study abroad, maybe you went to New Zealand, that's because Dr. Frazier touched you and had an opportunity to build that pathway for you. And for some of you, if you've been talked into or out of going to graduate school, Dr. Frazier may have had something to do that, too. And when you look on that foothill and you see that A that's up there that's painted bright white in the fall, Dr. Frazier has had something to do with that. So, Marshall Frazier, you're retiring at the end of this semester. And I just, on behalf of our community, wanted to say thank you. Thanks for all that you do. And so, so very proud to have you as a Ram.
Well, this idea of convening and affirming and thinking and kind of going back, back to yourself and thinking about the opportunities that you had and really wondering how you're going to be resilient, that really came to a head during the last 18 months, hasn't it? There have been times when you've needed to talk to someone, to reach out. I say this not only to the graduates here, but to, to our families and friends. I've enjoyed that as well because I've had a group of folks that have helped to lead me with their, with their clear-eyed acuity, with their vision, with their science, and with their inspiration that have helped me to navigate some of these challenging waters. I hope that throughout your lives you continue to do that. I wanted to bring one of those folks with us today who could share that with us as part of our, our commencement speaking. And that's why it's a great pleasure for me to introduce Dr. Kemba Marshall. You need to know something about, about Dr. Marshall. She came to this uh, really right now as Director of Veterinary Services for Land Lakes for Purina's Animal Nutrition Center. She earned her doctor in veterinary medicine from the University of Florida in 1999. That's that orange that's on the back of the hood that that represents. After a one-year private practice internship, she completed a residency in avian and exotic animal medicine at the University of Tennessee College of Veterinary Medicine, and she's a boarded avian specialist of the American Board of Veterinary Practitioners. Dr. Marshall also earned a master's degree in public health from the University of Iowa in 2018. Kemba, you don't have enough to do. <laughs> so recognizing what was going on during the last 18 months, you founded the Marshall Recruiting Consortium, which focuses on improving the pipeline of diverse, talented job applicants, both in animal sciences and agricultural settings. Home for you is St. Louis, but your heartbeat, that's where your mom and dad is, is in Jacksonville, Florida. I want this group to know that as things were unfolding during the year, I happened to, to get to know uh, Kemba through some, some friends and an organization we're part of called Together We Grow, which is focused on inclusive excellence in agriculture. Lots of agribusinesses participate in building out our workforce. And I asked her questions about how do you navigate these challenging times? What are the kinds of things that you do? And she said something to me that she repeated to students yesterday that I thought was so very important. That in your life, you can be, a, be in a job, can be in a profession, that, that you can do things, but you don't have to put boundaries around yourself as that. You can live life with a purpose, and purpose can be folded into your vocation and the things you do. So it's with my great pleasure that I introduce to you our speaker today, Dr. Kemba Marshall, who will talk to you a little bit about purpose. Hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to be with you on today. I would like to get started by acknowledging the indigenous culture of the Osage Nation, Miseria, and Illinois Confederacy on whose land I live and work on in St. Louis, Missouri. Land acknowledgement statements are meant to recognize how we have inadvertently benefited from the history of colonization, removal, and genocide of indigenous people. As you heard during the reading of my bio, my parents are my two heartbeats. Like many others, my parents and extended family are joining us via live streaming today. We welcome our virtual audience as well as, though, as, well as those here in the room today. Graduates, first things first. Let's clap our hands to thank all of the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, godparents, and family members responsible for helping you make it here to Commencement Saturday. I am also told that the College of Agricultural Sciences has not had an in-person commencement ceremony for several semesters. Let's do a bit of a roll call so I will know who is present. Class of 2020, clap so I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Class of 2021, clap so I can hear you. I acknowledge and congratulate you all on doing a hard thing. Obtaining a college degree takes discipline and focus. Obtaining a college degree during a pandemic, going from the classroom to Zoom rooms and back 
facing unknowns every day takes fortitude and stick to itness. Congratulations, you did it. For the benefit of our audience, I would like to point out that graduates here today are all part of the College of Ag Sciences, but represent many different facets of agriculture. If you majored in agricultural biology, business, or education, raise your hands. If you majored in animal or equine science, raise your hands. Environmental and natural resource econ majors, raise your hands. Landscape architects, raise your hands. Soil and crop sci majors, raise your hands. How many of you have known from a young age what you wanted to do professionally? Okay. How many of you are still taking time to find the career path that speaks to you? I can assure you all that it will all work itself out in the end. The road that you will take is being built by you, for you, and around you as you take it. Speaking of roads, one of my favorite things to do when traveling for work is to fly in early and get to see great parts of our beautiful country. I flew in and took the scenic route from Denver here to Fort Collins and remarked on how beautiful this state is. Naturally, when you think about Colorado, you think about two things, CSU and the Colorado River. As I thought about what I wanted to share with you on today, I stumbled upon several articles about the Colorado River. I learned that the Colorado River is more than 1,400 miles long and provides water to over 40 million people. The headwaters of the Colorado River start in the Putter, known also as La Poudre Pass. I also learned we don't really have as much water in the Colorado River as was originally allotted for in the 1922 water compact that divided the Colorado River into the upper and lower basins for seven states, 30 indigenous American tribes, countless animals and plants to share. Initially, when proportioning the waters of the Colorado River, entire sections of Mexico, which depend on the Colorado River, were not accounted for. I learned that the original challenges around water use and consumption in the Colorado River reflect much of what we, were, we are still wrestling with today, almost 100 years later. The need to water people, animals, and plants is calling us all to answer, how do we share, conserve, and recycle water? No matter what your major is, in ag, we are always thinking about water. We are thinking about standing water, dehydration, floods, drought, evaporation, and precipitation. People, animals, and plants have to have water in order to survive. People drink water, play in water, cook with water, clean with water. According to the US Geological Services Water Science School, up to 60% of the human adult body is water. The brain and heart are composed of 73% water. The lungs, about 83% water. The skin contains 64% water. Muscles and kidneys are 79% water. Even our bones contain 31% water. For a moment, let me speak to everyone in the audience who serves as the scaffolding or human infrastructure of our graduates. When I told my parents at eight that I was going to vet school, there was no one in my family who had ever said that before. Unsure of exactly what that meant for me and my family, or how that would manifest itself in my life, my parents lovingly allowed me to be my authentic self and enthusiastically said, okay. 
My parents could not have known that I would take all of the education they afforded me to have and leave home permanently. I never resided in Jacksonville, Florida after graduating from high school. To the families gathered here today, today, these graduates do not know where agriculture will take them. Give your permission and allow them to go after their pursuits. No child wants to disappoint their family's expectations. So tell them that you expect them to go and to grow. I did not see myself in agriculture at eight years old. That's because I chose the profession of veterinary medicine based on a city girl's understanding of veterinary medicine in the early 1980s. I thought I would be in a mobile vet practice treating patients with my own van and that my mom would be working with me as both my receptionist and my driver. <laughs> Once I got to vet school and had to choose a track, I chose mixed animal medicine. I wanted to study exotics and specialize in the study of birds. What I do today, working on a 2,000 acre large animal research farm for a feed manufacturing company is nothing that the eight-year-old me could have ever imagined. Founding my own company, Marshall Recruiting Consortium, to address the lack of diversity in agricultural and animal health industries in 2020 was also well beyond the thought processes of the eight-year-old me. You may be thinking, what is the connection between me, you, and the Colorado River? I am glad you asked. Ideas that you have about your career start in your head, almost as a tiny stream of consciousness. Left alone with only your thoughts, you are limited to what you know and your experiences. At its origin or its head, the Colorado River is hardly a river at all. It begins as a tiny stream. It is only expanded by communication with tributaries. Water from a vast network of tributaries, of which there are more than 25, are what expand the small stream at the putter into the mighty Colorado River. That's 25 points of communication for flora and fauna exchange. The diversity of each of the tributaries of the Colorado River is fully expressed at the mouth of the Colorado River, or the Gulf of California. The Gulf of California is known also as the Sea of Cortez or the Vermilion Sea. Your knowledge of agriculture only expands when you communicate the thoughts that you have with others, challenging, exchanging, and refining those ideas. You must communicate the thoughts in your head through your mouth so that they can be shared and expand into something that is going to make an impact for ag. If you are going to make an impact for agriculture, you are going to have to serve. We have people to feed, medicines to develop, and an earth to preserve. Agriculture is service. You contribute your idea to the group and come away with a larger idea. Large ideas are needed to address the challenges of our day. Each of us acts as a tributary, adding to the overall body of knowledge and understanding of agriculture. To meet the challenges of our today and tomorrow, it is going to take all of us adding diverse thoughts and experiences to innovate our way into the future of agriculture. The challenges are great and include global warming, greenhouse gas emissions, basin warming, along with agricultural and land developments. The challenges were great prior to the last 18 months, a global pandemic, empty grocery store shelves, closed slaughterhouses, and raging wildfires have given us all pause. Why do I point this out? Because all of these things can be positively impacted by agriculture. And what exactly is agriculture? According to the CSU Department of Ag landing page, agriculture was the first science and the progenitor of all sciences. It remains steadfastly the science that supports human life. 
Agriculture is a science and a way of life. It is a practice of cultivation. That small stream of consciousness in your head that said, I'm going to study ag in school, has gotten you here today to the watershed, the gulf, the mouth of the river. The watershed is not the end, but the beginning. This is the station where you stop to integrate new thoughts, ideas, knowledge, and experiences before you flow out into the world. This is the space where in spite of all of the things that are going wrong, you can be a part of all of the things that are going right. We have water smart landscaping, commercialized insect protein production, drip systems and AI that, in, that water individual row crops, increased efficiencies in meat, milk, and egg production, and big data systems that allow us to model consumption, evaporation, and precipitation of water. I want to encourage you all to be hopeful and realize that there is no better time than right now to be in agriculture. Everything is on the table, and COVID has paved the way for unparalleled innovation. Herbert Hoover was the Secretary of Commerce in 1922 when the Water Compact was created. He concluded the Water Pack Compact with these words, leaving the further apportionment of the river's use to the hands of those men who may come after us, possessed of a far greater fund of information. Graduates, today, no matter your gender, you have come after and do indeed possess a far greater fund of information. This is your time to use that information and do your part and serve in support of human life in honor of the first science, which you now hold degrees in. Graduates, go forward, go cultivate, go grow, go make a difference in human life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Marshall, for your inspiring and hopeful words. We sincerely appreciate you joining us today. Good afternoon, graduates. I'm Addie Elliott. I serve as the Assistant Dean of Academic Advising and Student Success here in the college. And I offer my warmest congratulations to each and every one of you for your graduation today in this fall commencement ceremony. I met many of you four years ago. Ram, welcome. Seems like a long time ago, right? Um, how you've changed and how you've grown from your first year. Your curiosities, your passion, your creativity, and your inspiration have definitely left your mark on the College of Agricultural Sciences. So thank you for sharing yourselves with us. Colorado State University recognizes outstanding scholarship by granting the baccalaureate degree cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude to those students in each college who have achieved high academic excellence in their undergraduate programs. The students collectively may be recognized by their gold gowns. The College of Agricultural Sciences designates the distinction of summa cum laude to those graduates maintaining a cumulative degree or a cumulative GPA of 3.98 during their undergraduate program. These students are wearing gold cords in addition to their gold robes. The college designates magna cum laude to those graduates maintaining a cumulative 3.85 GPA and cum laude to those graduates who maintain a 3.78 cumulative GPA during their academic program of study. First, I invite our candidate for cum laude to please stand and be recognized as I announce your names. We ask that you hold your applause until we have acknowledged each group of candidates. Brett Berthet with a major in animal sciences. Maddie Davis with a major in animal sciences. Please stay standing so we can applaud you. Thanks. Emily Jacobs with a major in equine science. Maya Noha with a major in equine science. And Devin Torre with a major in animal science. 
Please join me in offering congratulations to our cum laude candidate. Thank you. Now you may be seated. Now I invite our candidates for magna cum laude to please stand and be recognized. Teresa Bershek with a major in equine sciences. Wonderful job, Teresa. Please join me in congratulating Teresa. You may be seated. Thank you. Lastly, I invite our summa cum laude candidates to please stand and be recognized. Alex Evans with a major in equine science and Gwendolyn Orth with a major in equine science. Please join me in congratulating our summa cum laude candidates. CSU was founded 151 years ago as part of the land-grant system to educate the citizens of Colorado and the world. The undergraduates in this, rep in this room represent some of the most talented and committed people in the state, the country, and the world. I would like to take a moment to recognize a special group amongst our community, our first generation students, faculty, and staff. To be among the first in your family to receive a college degree is an achievement unto itself. And now you are seeing the accumulation of your hard work and sacrifice as a graduate. If you wish and are able, I invite all first generation graduates, faculty, and staff to please stand and be recognized as we applaud your success. Congratulations. Wonderful, thank you. You may be seated. I am pleased to recognize the students who have earned the distinction of University Honors Scholar. To become a University Honors Scholar, a student completes an integrated program of study, which includes seven honors seminars and an honors thesis, and they also must receive a 3.5 cumulative GPA in their undergraduate studies. These students may be recognized by the green gowns and the black stoles they are wearing. When I announce your name, will, you, will the student who is receiving a candidacy for University Honor Scholar please stand and remain standing while we, um, recognize, you, while we recognize your success? Ainsley Tierney. Please join me in congratulating Ainsley for a University Honors Scholarship. Thank you. At this time, I would like to welcome back the, to the podium the Dean of the College of Agricultural Sciences, James Pritchett. You know, we have a number of alums and current students who have served in the military over time, and some are commissioned at these graduation ceremonies. We don't have anybody being commissioned today, but I did want to take just a moment to ask uh, all of those that are in the audience who currently serve in the U.S. Armed Forces, all of our student veterans, and all of our veterans in the audience to stand and be recognized. Thank you. Thank you for your service to our community to our state, and to our country. Please join me in welcoming President Joyce McConnell, the 15th president of Colorado State University, who will offer remarks before conferring of degrees. Thank you, Dean Pritchett. I can't even begin to tell you how exciting it is for me to be here today with all of you. I am so proud of the graduates. Thank you. Thank you for being part of our community, for everything you've done. I know you've worked very hard for these degrees. I know the last 18 months have been particularly challenging. I admire each and every one of you. I'm so very, very proud to be your president. I'm delighted to be here to celebrate all of you. You are tomorrow's leaders. 
along with all of your friends and your families who believe deeply in you and your ability to lead. And I'm thrilled that we're back together celebrating in person for the first time since 2019. I know how meaningful it is to have the people you care about and who care about you on hand to help mark this important day. We're here to honor you and your hard work and to celebrate your academic accomplishments. We're also here to share in the excitement about the bright futures you've built for yourself here at Colorado State University. Learn, earning a degree has always required hard work and dedication, but your experience over the past two years came with an array of unexpected challenges. You should take tremendous pride in successfully confronting and overcoming those challenges. In doing so, you demonstrated incredible perseverance, flexibility, extra effort, and what my tough mom always called grit. And I think that we, you all have a tremendous amount of grit. Our world has changed significantly in a very short time and will continue to change. Your ability to adapt to those changes has distinguished you here at CSU and no doubt will continue to do so as you move forward. When new challenges inevitably arise, you will be able to draw on these experiences and what they have taught you. You will be able to reach across distance to friends and mentors, faculty and staff in times of need, and they will be there for you. Your studies have prepared you for many professional possibilities. Among you are future scientists, some of you will be authors. Some may become artists. Some of you will be educators. Some of you will be lawyers, activists, advocates, inventors, farmers, ranchers, working at places like Land of Lakes. And there will be a potential array of careers that haven't even been invented yet. And 40, 30, 20 years from now, you'll find yourselves in those positions and know that what you did here made you able to do everything you need to do. The knowledge, experience, and expertise you have gained over these past few years have not only prepared you to be great at what you do, but to lead in the workplace, in your community, and in our world. Our world needs leaders more now than ever. I am so proud to know that you will be among them. So I have a charge for you today. Whatever you do next, wherever your journey takes you, do one thing for yourself. Own your brilliance and keep your, keep your hearts open. Our community has a powerful, shining, bold spirit, one of hope and optimism that never will be dimmed by the challenges you encounter. This spirit has endured for generations, growing brighter and stronger, particularly in the face of adversity. So let's own the brilliance and shine together today, tomorrow, and far into the future. Each of you will always be a valued member of our RAM family, one of the brilliant minds and great hearts who make up the CSU community that reaches across our nation and around the world. I can't wait to see where your journey takes you and how your CSU education will help make the world a better place but I have no doubt that what you do will be amazing. On behalf of the entire CSU community, congratulations to all of you.
Thank you, President McConnell, for those remarks. Graduates, would you please rise for just a moment? President McConnell, I present to you the candidates from the College of Agricultural Sciences for the baccalaureate degree. These candidates and their fellows, fellows in absentia have fulfilled the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Science at Colorado State University. This is my favorite part. <laughs> Would all of the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees please rise? Thank you, Dean Pritchett. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System, I hereby confer upon each of you the Bachelor of Science degree, together with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Let us recognize the great achievements of this outstanding group of students. Congratulations to the class of fall 2021. Thank you so much, President McConnell. The time we've all been waiting for. You may be seated for a moment. We will now award diplomas to the graduated class. The department marshals will lead the graduates to the stage, and the department heads will present your diploma covers. And Dr. Sue Ellen Melzer will announce the graduates. A listing of our candidates may be found in the program that's available on the CSU commencement website or via the QR code displayed at the entrances. I'm so used to wearing a mask. I hope you can hear me. Sorry. Uh, graduates, it's truly exciting to be able to come together today to celebrate. But before we invite you across the stage, we would ask, due to an overabundance of caution, that we refrain from shaking hands or making any physical contact. Please know this little bit of distance does not diminish our pride in everything you've accomplished and how special today actually is. Graduates, parents, and friends, commencement ceremonies are honored and distinguished occasions as well as a time for true celebration. Please feel free to express your pride and happiness as your candidate receives their degree. Will the department marshals please direct the graduates to the platform? Benjamin Joseph Seidlin, Bachelor of Science, Landscape Architecture. Gage Livermore, Landscape Design and Contracting. Stephen Joseph Kinepa, Bachelor of Science, Environmental Horticulture, Landscape Design and Contracting. Margaret J. Kurth, Bachelor of Science, Environmental Horticulture, Landscape Business. Riley Marie June, Bachelor of Science, Environmental Horticulture, Landscape Design and Contracting. Austin Barellas, Bachelor of Science, Environmental Horticulture. Haley Kathleen Parsons, Bachelor of Science, Horticulture, Horticultural Business Management. Brandon M. Larson, Bachelor of Science, 
Horticulture, Horticultural Business Management. Samuel A. Kaplan, Bachelor of Science, Horticulture, Floriculture. Garrett Stephen Bird, Bachelor of Science, Horticulture, Floriculture. Dominique R. DiMucci, Bachelor of Science, Horticulture, Floriculture, Minor, Plant Health. Tanner A. Tanner A. Bingham, Bachelor of Science, Horticulture, Crop Management. Taylor Dean Schultz, Bachelor of Science, Horticulture, Horticultural Food Crops. <laughs> Next is the Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics. Cole Crossett. Bachelor of Science, Environmental and Natural Resource Economics. Morgan Efren, Bachelor of Science, Environmental and Natural Resource Economics, Minor in Global Environmental Sustainability, and Sustainable Water Interdisciplinary Minor. Griffin Snow, Bachelor of Science in Environmental and Natural Resource Economics, Minor in Business Administration. Branton Seth Gentry Jasper, Bachelor of Science, Agricultural Business. <laughs> Caleb Jared Anderson, Bachelor of Science, Agricultural Business. <laughs> Victoria Huberty, Bachelor of Science, Agricultural Business. Jamie Knorr, Bachelor of Science, Agricultural Business, Minor in Agricultural Literacy. <laughs> Chancy Curvier, Bachelor of Science, Major in Ag Business. <laughs> Rebecca Ann Pennock, Bachelor of Science, Agricultural Education, Teacher Development. Ella Jean Rice, Bachelor of Science, Agricultural Business. Next is the Department of Soil and Crop Sciences. Joseph Ross Headley, Bachelor of Science, Soil and Crop Sciences, with a minor in Agricultural Business. Daniel D. Lynch, Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences. <laughs> Catherine Jean Johnson, Bachelor of Science, Soil and Crop Sciences, Plant Technology, Genetics, and Breeding. <laughs> Samantha Bryan, Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences and Agricultural Business, Minor in Economics. Kenneth R. Crespin, Bachelor of Science, Soil and Crop Sciences, Plant Biotechnology, Genetics, and Breeding. <laughs> Next is the Department of Animal Sciences. Alex E. Evans, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Emily Jacobs. Bachelor of Science, Equine Science. <laughs> Devin E. Torre, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science, Cum Laude. <laughs> Brent Hastings Berthold, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science, Cum Laude. Madeline Macy Davis, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science, Cum Laude. Maya Helena Noah, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science, Cum Laude. 
Gwendolyn Taylor Orth, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science, Minor in Business Administration, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Teresa M. Burschek, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science, Magna Cum Laude. Yeah. Annalise Tierney, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science, Biomedical Sciences. Cassie Michaela Moore, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science, Minor in Business Administration. Grace Ann Leonard, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Kyle R. Purdue, Bachelor of Science in Equine Science. Alexandra Simone Galati, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science, Minor in Business Administration. Erica Madison Crothers, Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Minor in Chemistry and Food Science and Safety. <laughs> Lindsay K. Kufeld, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Salvetti Michael Diascoli, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science, and Agricultural Business. Joseph W. Clark, Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. Brittany Lynn Fetzer, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Caitlin Critchett Lane, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Modesta Abby May Everett, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science, Minor in Agricultural Liter Literacy. Anna Diamico, Bachelor of Science, Major in Equine Science. Jordan H. Shelton, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science. Andy O'Brien, Bachelor of Science, Major in Animal Science. Jessica Escobar, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Viani Castellanos Valenzuela, Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. <laughs> Alexandria Del Botton, Major uh, Bachelors of Science, Animal Sciences. <laughs> Jacqueline Del Botton, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Juliana Garcia Salomon, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Jacqueline Shaparo Sierra, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Erin Elizabeth Hefner, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science. Camille C. Stowell, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science. Kyra Eveline Seedroff, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science. Jonah Leverson, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Gabriel Garcia, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Amber Nicole Elliott, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. W. Robert Wardell, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Brooklyn K. Little, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science, Minor in Biomedical Science. 
Dominique Marie Boggs, Bachelor of Science, Animal Science. Yeah. Yeah. Valeriano Arnal Arnal Arnaldo Lopez, Bachelor of Science, Equine Science. At this time, the College of Agricultural Sciences is honored to present posthumous bachelor's degrees to two members of our Ram family who are unable to be with us here today. Drew Thomas Wilcox, Wilcox excuse me, is receiving a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Horticulture. Drew passed away in November of this year and was loved by our Horticulture and Landscape Architecture Department. He enjoyed horticulture and all things outdoors and especially enjoyed spending time with his family and friends. He was known for helping others, sharing hugs, and showing big smiles. We are so proud to recognize his baccalaureate success and present his degree to his family. Receiving the degree on behalf of the family are Drew's parents, Ron and Anne Marie. Today we also recognize Byron Carter, who passed away last year while pursuing his agricultural business degree online from his home in Parsons, Kansas. While completing his studies, Byron worked as a consultant in keeping family farm records. Though he attended class from his home in Kansas, he interacted closely with his classmates and instructors. Byron was an accomplished student who overcame much adversity and truly excelled in his coursework. We are again so proud to present Byron's agricultural business degree to his family today. We are honored to be able to present these degrees uh, for all of our families. Now, please join me in welcoming your student commencement speaker, Daniel Lynch, to the podium. Thank you, Dean Pritchett. Hello, everyone. I'd just like to start by congratulating all of the graduates and the family here today. Moments like these are really worth taking a second to really take everything in and appreciate the moment. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Daniel Lynch. I grew up here in Fort Collins, and I come from a non-ag background, so I might have had a very different experience than many of you before coming to Colorado State University. CSU has been a major part in my life for as long as I can remember. 
One of my first memories of the university is running the, uh, running the race around the oval at about the age of six and being cheered on by students that are about my age now. At the age of eight, I started volunteering at the School is Cool program, helping to provide school supplies for underprivileged uh, children in the Poudre School District. These programs really helped me develop an understanding of the impact that this institution has on our community. After graduating from high school in Fort Collins, I began searching for a summer job, which led me to the Ardeck facility. Coming from a non-ag background, I really had no idea what kind of work was involved in agriculture or what the role of land-grant universities was within the local community. After working my summer job at Ardeck, I began to fall in love with agriculture and value its importance to society. Once the summer ended and fall registration began, I was faced with the choice of what I'd like to study at the university. After my experience that summer, I knew that agriculture was my calling. Through my time in my undergraduate program, I met a group of individuals that helped me guide me into the person that I am today. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge those people. Barry Ogg and Randy Crowell are both faculty members at Ardeck that I've had the pleasure of working under throughout my years at CSU. Through our amazing conversations and our time spent together, they have helped me become a well-rounded representative of the university. I'd also like to give a very special thanks to Zach Zarnecki, who is the manager of the San Luis Valley Research Station. Through an opportunity to intern at this research center, Zach allowed me to implement the education I received at CSU and practice a variety of skills that I wouldn't be able to do anywhere else. Most of all, I'd like to thank my girlfriend, Catherine, my brother, Thomas, my dad, and mostly my mother, my hero, Shelly. As an undergraduate student herself, who graduated earlier today, I'd like to add, my mom was able to handle all the responsibilities of having a family and raising two boys, all while completing her degree as well. This commencement represents, yes, please. This commencement represents a very special moment for my family, and I can't say I know anyone else who graduated college at the same time as their mom. <laughs> you all put up with me during finals and during harvest season, two stressful and difficult times. Without the support network that I have, I wouldn't be able to get to where I am today. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge all of the hard work of the administrative staff here at the university. Chris Amerman and Ty McNamee were my academic counselors and were two individuals that I always looked forward to meeting with and helped me guide me through my career. Dr. Matt Wallenstein and Dean Pritchett have always been friendly faces that were excited to see me and vice versa. Finally, I'd like to thank Kirsten Slaughter-Rice, um, who was always incredibly helpful and did an amazing job at creating and handling our College of Ag events. It's been amazing spending time with these individuals as they watched me develop as a student. I'd like to close things up by briefly discussing the idea of land stewardship and the responsibility us graduates have to maintain and improve the world around us. With an ever-increasing demand for natural resources to feed and sustain a growing population, it's our turn to act as leaders. It's up to us to utilize our skills to provide answers to some of the tough questions that we will face. Going forward, it's our responsibility to value the world around us and understand what impacts the actions we take today have on the world of tomorrow. This is no easy task, but with the knowledge provided to us by the university, we can start to produce goods and operate within the framework of sustainability. This is the only way for us as a graduating class and leaders of the industry to truly leave the world a better place than we found it. Looking out at all my peers here today, I couldn't be more excited to see where this graduating class ends up and the things that we will all do. As alumni of CSU, we are an extremely good company. We'll continue to demonstrate the abilities of individuals coming out of CSU. It's with great excitement that I can say I've never been prouder to be a CSU Ram. Go Rams! Daniel, thank you so much for those inspiring words and for coming on up here and being in this brave space and talking to your fellow graduates. That was just awesome, so thank, thank, thank you very much. 
Y'all, my name is Matt Camper. I use he, him pronouns, and I, I have the pleasure to serve as the Assistant Dean of Teaching Practice and Academic Programs for the College of Agricultural Sciences. Not long ago, that, that was put in there, but it was quite a while ago now. A, a while ago, I sat right where you sat, and I walked across this same stage. And when that happened, uh, someone asked me a question. And that question was, who here is proud to be a CSU Ram? I said, I'm proud to be a CSU Ram. I say, I'm proud. Come on, to be a CSU Ram. I say, I'm proud. Come on, to be a CSU Ram. I say, I'm proud to be a CSU Ram. Ah, oh, goosebumps, y'all. Oh, goosebumps. Thank you for doing that with me. And, and it does come to a point. Okay, those words will bring you back here. As you walked across this stage, you stopped being students for just a second and you started being alumni, alumni of Colorado State University. And as I stood uh, here in front of you and I sat over there just a little bit ago, I was reflecting on the fact that, that all of you have a different path and future ahead. But whether you stay in Fort Collins or you travel to the far ends of the world, you have one important thing in common with each other and over 200,000 others that have come before you. You are all alumni of Colorado State University. You're joining poets and scientists. You're teachers and engineers, food producers, care providers, entrepreneurs, and a myriad of others who've walked across this stage. Please remember that no matter where your personal and professional journey takes you, that the College of Agricultural Sciences, your former instructors and staff here in the college and around the university, and the Alumni Association will be here for you every step of the way. So let's have a round of applause. President McConnell, Dean Pritchett, I can hereby verify that the fall graduating 2021 class is definitely proud to be CSU Rams. Now, while today is important for all of you, there's a final group that we would like to acknowledge. At this time, I would like to ask all of the family and friends joining us today to please stand if you're able, and everyone hold your applause for just a second, but if you're able, please stand for us. That's everybody on the sides that wishes to do so. Folks, talking to you that are standing, this group of graduates worked so hard to succeed because you showed them what success looks like. They had motivation because you were always there building them up and they took advantage of new and diverse opportunities because you gave them the confidence to do so. Graduates, these wonderful people standing around you right now helped you with homework, made you food that you liked, or even if you didn't, made you try just a little bit, right? hugged you into feeling better, inspired you in your own career path and passions, and really probably helped you all just to be better people. These folks here for you today are for a lack of a better world, awesome. And so now, through your applause, cheering, revelry, whatever you wanna do, is the time for you to tell them so. Woo! My thanks to you all, you can be seated. As we begin to draw to a close, I wanna thank the members of the platform party, the staff in the college, our Ag Council and Ag Ambassador representatives, and all others who helped arrange this commencement. A very special thanks goes to Mary Jane Tom and Renee Wilson for providing the sign language interpretation and to Dr. Swellen Meltzer for reading the names. The Colorado State University Air Force, Pershing, Air Force excuse me, Pershing, uh, right, Rifles Wing Walker Honor Guard for presenting the colors, and the CSU Brass Ensemble and Emmanuel Bonilla for leading us in singing. So I'm responsible for making you stand and sit quite a bit as we finish up, just so you know. At this time, I would ask everyone to please rise and join Emmanuel Bonilla and the CSU Brass Ensemble in singing the Colorado State Alma Mater. Hail 
to Thee, our alma mater, Colorado State. Memories are everlasting of this place so great. May thy green and gold unite us, loyal ever be. Colorado State, our alma mater, hail, all hail to thee. Thank you, Emmanuel. You all may be, uh, please be seated. Last time, I promise. <laughs> Graduates, you've been part of a really special event. It's your university graduation and an event you will always remember. We are proud to have played a part in your lives, but we are most excited about what you will do and who you will become in the future. In just a few minutes, you will rise and leave this ar uh, arena, or, uh, this, uh, uh, this, Auditorium, thank you. <laughs> this auditorium, as alumni of Colorado State University and the College of Agricultural Sciences, we humbly ask that as you take those first steps towards whatever lies ahead, that you reflect on and hold tightly to the principles of community that are at the core of this great university. I will ask the audience to please remain seated while the platform group, faculty, and graduates retire from the Grand Ballroom. My thanks to all of you for being with us. And in the same manner as I have concluded every class I've taught here at CSU, I ask you all to be safe, to take care of one another, and go be Rams.